Pageant 101. Come on, Ragable, how long is this gonna take you? I see some suspicious looking people parked over there. Oh, I've got to find one. I've got to find a broken vehicle in here somewhere. I've got you one. I've got to be authentic in this show. And Pox blew all the goddamn money on the PS3, so we can't buy a used one. Well, why can't Pox be out here deep in the trash himself? Well, that would make me his bitch then, wouldn't it? are going to think you're a bum. Come on. Yeah. Oh my Finally. gosh. Five hours of this shit, we finally found one. Oh, good. Hi, I'm Fox. I'm Ragable. And this is PSP Hacking 101 episode... 27. Yes. <laughs> and in today's episode, we're going to be covering some big news. That everybody already probably knows about, but nonetheless. The speed of internet is faster than our speed of making videos. Oh. <laughs> The Universal Downgrader slash Unbricker. Yeah, so there was a, a video going around a few months back of this magical battery and memory stick that could unbrick a PSP if you, you botched an, uh, a custom firmware installer or something like that. And it uh, turns out it's true. And, it exists. And this awesome team of all the greatest homebrew developers got together and they made a method of making your own. The Justice League of Hackers <laughs> PSP. All right, so let's get to it. Let's flash your battery. Requirements. Um, a spare PSP battery, if you have one to spare, there are ways to restore your battery from modified to unmodified. Secondly, uh, a spare Memory Stick Pro Duo, if you have a spare one. Uh, if not, it can always be restored too, but it's just nice to have these two things sitting around just in case. So, and it needs to be less than four gigabytes, but it's recommended about 512. They say 256 will work. And then of course, as usual, uh, access to a PSP with 1.5 firmware or a custom firmware on it. And the battery needs to be a Sony battery or a, or a reputable third party <laughs> battery. <laughs> I'd try it on a Sony. Yeah. Okay. Now that you have your required materials, you are ready to go ahead and start the process. First thing, format the memory stick within inside any PC format utility that you can get your hands on. Uh, when we did it, we had to do it in XP and we had to format it as a fat partition. Secondly, you need, now, you need to now put the memory stick into the PSP, connect it to your PC and run the MSP format utility. This is logically formatting the memory stick we were only successful doing this in Windows XP. It yes. can be done in other operating systems, but we couldn't get it to work. <laughs> yes. So you have now logically formatted your memory stick. You need to now set up the necessary folders. Uh, you need to set up the root PSP folder, and in the PSP folder, set up the game folder, where you will extract the installer and battery folder contents so that you can run the homebrew later on. Uh, secondly, you need to download the official Sony 1.5 update and put that onto the root of the memory stick and rename that to update.pbp. Now you need to make sure that this PSP is capable of running 1.5 kernel mode eBoots. Yes, so it has to be a 1.5 PSP or your custom firmware needs to be in 1.5 mode, whatever. So after that, go ahead and run the installer program, which will create the firmware files on the root of the memory stick, as well as the msipl.bin file, which is the actual binary whatever file written to the battery. So that's an important piece right there. Connect the PSP back to the PC again and run the msipl program on the PC side, which will actually take that bin file and set it up further, give more files. I don't know, it does even more magic. Hence the magic memory stick. Now that you have all the files that you need, you are ready to go ahead and start flashing to your battery. Go ahead and go back to your PSP and run the Pandora's Battery Creator homebrew application. It'll launch a text menu. And the first thing that you should do is push the triangle button. Don't questions, just push it. Back up your battery EEPROM to your memory stick. Back it up, reboot, go back, launch the application, push X slash cross and it will flash your battery into service mode. 
And now you have a magic memory stick and a jig kick battery. Actually using the jig kick battery and the magic memory stick. Remove the power cord and make sure your battery is at 50% or greater, probably greater. I have it fully charged just to make sure because <laughs> they kept on bitching at us no matter what <laughs> we did. And then go ahead, start up the PSP and it'll give you an option to back up the PSP NAND flash with triangle as well. Go ahead and do that. Some essential stuff that is backing up and then it'll reboot, I assume. I forgot already. <laughs> If it reboots, it reboots. If it doesn't, stay in the menu and push X to flash to downgrade to 1.5. Unbrick it. You're flashing. And that's it. Then you will have a freshly downgraded slash unbricked PSP at 1.5. Mind you, it's not full. Yes, this is a minimal 1.5. Secondly, if you're unbricking a PSP, it cannot regenerate the ID storage for you. This is an essential component to the PSP and is necessary to run UMD games. And you'll lose some region settings as well, or something like that. I forgot what. But so it's, it's recommended that you upgrade to another firmware or, and, and then install custom firmware. Yes. Which means is weird, or upgrade and downgrade again. And <laughs> but anyways, you, could be, you should be good to go for homebrew at this point. Yes. And so your PSPs are now functioning again. How about it? Cool, so now you should have a PSP running... 1.5. A minimal 1.5. Yeah. <laughs> Which you can obviously take other places. <laughs> but yes, once you're at this point, then you are capable of installing custom firmwares and all that really fun stuff. The road to a greater... So you can go back and watch the babies and they can tell you how to do that. <laughs> back, jump back an episode. Oh yeah, so this is actually episode 27, which gives you enough episodes for... A DVD. So this, this is the final episode of this DVD. Yes. So DVD 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Volume 6. Volume 6. Or 5. <laughs> no, it's 6. It's volume 6. <laughs> Which volume is it? I don't know, but this one's going to have a really neat behind the scenes on how we made well, this episode. And kind of a little tutorial on how we do the show, period. And audio commentaries and all the episodes. And it's going to help us out in making more shows. Yes. Uh, so, especially like a PS3 Hacking 101 show. Yes, and that's the other announcement. We were able to get a PS3 with the sales from the last DVD. Thank you very much. And we will be kicking out quite a few shows pretty soon here. Um, so stay tuned to twosmartguys.com. No, not ps3hacking101.com. That is not our domain. <laughs> Nor will it ever be. <laughs> and we don't care. Oh, and uh, if you got questions, the forums are the best way to get quick answers. There's a bazillion people living on there, and they know this stuff by heart. Yes. You can, you can try emailing us, poxandragable at psphacking101.com, but we most likely won't answer you. Sorry. We just no offense, it's just <laughs> a lot of emails. and. Anyways, have fun. Yes. It's late. I think I see some creepy guys over there.